All right, we're going to take a quick look at drawing ray diagrams for lenses and mirrors. Um, so here are all the possibilities when you have a single lens. We have objects that are um, outside the focal length of a um, concave and convex lens and objects that are inside the focal length of a, um, of a convex and a concave lens. Um, so let's start at the, at the top. The first light ray that you would draw comes in parallel to the optic axis. And then this light ray is going to diverge because this is a diverging lens. And so it's going to diverge um, as though it had come from this focal point here. right? So that's how you know how far out to bend it. It should look as though it originated here at this focal point. Another light ray you can always draw is one that goes right through the center of the lens um, undeflected. And so what you notice is these two light rays are not going to meet. Um, so no image is going to be formed on the left. And so what you need to do then is trace back where these rays appear to be coming from. So this light ray appears to be coming from along this line, where this light ray appears to be coming from along this line. What that means then is the tip of the arrow will show up here at this crossing point, and so here is the final image that's formed. Um, so if you're over here on this side of the lens, your eye is kind of tricked because of the lens bending this light. And instead of the light ray looking like it's coming from the, the tip of the arrow here, it is bent and it looks like it comes from somewhere along this line. And that's why the tip of the arrow in the image appears to be here. Um, so let's take a look at the next one. Next one's a converging lens. So this light ray is going to come in and it's going to converge toward the optic axis instead of away. And so it's going to converge toward this focal point. Um, uh, as before, you can draw a light ray through the center of the lens, and what you notice this time is they do meet on the other side. Um, and so what that means is that is going to be where an image forms, uh, the tip of the arrow is going to show up there. Um, a third set or a third ray that you could draw would be one through the focal point here. And what that light ray will do is refract to be parallel to the optic axis. Now the reason we know that is any of these light ray paths are reversible. So if you drew a light ray coming in like this, it would then converge through the focal point. And so that's how I know that a ray through the focal point this way will get refracted parallel to the optic axis. So there is the uh, second ray diagram. That's for when you have an object outside the focal length um, of a... Uh, convex lens. Uh, we'll look at this next one, another uh, convex or converging lens. Uh, in comes a light ray. It's going to get focused down through the focal point, converge down. We can draw another light ray through the center of the lens. These two light rays are not going to meet on this side, and so you have to trace them back to see where they come from or where they appear to be coming from, and they appear to be coming from back here. Uh, and so what that means is you're going to get uh, the image, or the tip of the arrow is going to show up back there. Um, let's do the last one with a, a diverging lens or a concave lens. Um, in this case, you have a, oh, I forgot to mention, there's a, a third ray we could have drawn here, one that comes uh, up through the focal point. Um, and up through the tip of the arrow, the original object, and then that would refract um, parallel the optic axis. If you reverse that ray, a light ray coming in parallel the optic axis would get refracted through the focal point. So that's how we know about that uh, light ray. And what you notice is, again, that light ray, all three of these emerging light rays appear to be coming from here. So it's just another confirmation that the image is, th uh, is located there. Um, let's do the last one. You have a light ray coming in. It's a diverging lens, so it's going to diverge away from the uh, optic axis. Now, how far? Do, how do I know how far to angle it up? It's as though it came from this focal point here. So that's how you know how far to kick it up. Uh, another light ray through the center. Those two light rays are not going to meet here on the right-hand side. So you have to trace them back to see where they appear to be coming from, and it's going to be right here. Uh, and so you get this image over here on this side of the lens. Let's classify these images. The top one is, this is what's called an upright image. And I know when you first look at it, you're like, that's not upright, that's upside down. The reason you call it upright is it's the same orientation as the original object. So the original object here was below the optic axis, and so is the image. Well, so um, that's why this is called upright. It has the same orientation as the original object. Um, this is a virtual image because the light didn't actually pass through, all the light didn't actually pass through this point. We had to trace back this light ray, 
Um, so the light just appears to be coming from, from that point. Um, it does, doesn't actually, this light ray doesn't actually go through that point. So if you ever have to trace the light rays back, that's a sign it's going to be a, a virtual image. Um, the next one is an inverted image because it has the opposite orientation as the original object. And this one's a real image. The light actually flows to that place. Um, and so you could actually project this image on a screen there. Um, if you look at this next one, that is upright because it has the same orientation as the original object. Um, the arrow was kind of pointed up originally. Um, and it's virtual because you notice we had to trace all the light rays back to see where they were coming from. So light actually never goes through this point, it just looks like it does. Um, and then the final one here, this is also upright, same orientation as the original object. And again, it's virtual because we had to trace the light rays back. They don't actually, this light ray didn't actually go through this point ever. So you notice the only one that is uh, real um, and the only one that's inverted actually is when you have a converging lens and you have the original object outside the focal length. Um, so that's all about lenses. Let's look at the mirrors. So these are mirrors now. The light can't go through the thing. It has to bounce off. Um, these are spherical mirrors. And so first light ray comes in parallel to the axis. Um, it's going to bounce away as though it had come from this focal point. In fact, that's how the, like, the focal point is defined. Um, another light ray you can draw comes in toward the center. And locally here, it's just kind of like a bank shot off a wall. So it's going to go back at the same angle um, that it came in at. So you don't want to just arbitrarily, you know, put this thing going down. The, the angle between this incoming ray and the optic axis needs to be the same as this outgoing ray in the optic axis. It's like bouncing off a vertical wall, basically. Now, these two returning rays aren't going to meet, so you got to trace them back. And where they appear to be coming from, that's where the image shows up. So the image shows up behind the mirror. So this is like when you look in a funhouse mirror, you see a smaller version of yourself behind the mirror. Um, let's look at the next one. A converging mirror is this middle one, or second one, I should say. Um, bring a light ray in, parallel the axis. It refracts through the focal point, because this is a converging uh, mirror. The next light ray, you can bounce off the middle of the lens, and it's just going to bounce off, again, at the same angle from the axis that it came in at. And you notice these two are, rays are not going to meet, and so you got to kind of trace them back to see where they would appear to be coming from. That's back here, um, and you'll get a large image back here behind the mirror. So this would be like a funhouse mirror where you look bigger, um, looking into the concave side of a spoon as opposed to looking at the back of a spoon where you see a smaller version of yourself. Here you see a larger version of yourself. Um, let's uh, look at this second to last one here. Uh, bring a light ray in. Um, this is a diverging mirror, so instead of it coming tor back toward the axis, it's going to bounce away. Uh, how far do you know how, f how do you know how far to kick it up? Well, it's as though it came from this focal point. Um, another light ray you can always do is off the center. Again, it's just a direct symmetric bounce. And these two light rays are not going to meet, and so you got to trace them back as we did before. And where they cross, that's where you get the image from the mirror, uh, back here behind the mirror also. Um, and then finally, this last one, um, converging mirror with the object outside the focal point. You bring in a light ray, goes through the focal point. Bring in another light ray uh, to the center, and then again, bounce it off symmetrically um, at the same angle, basically, that it came in at. And you'll see that these guys meet uh, out here. And so you'll, now you'll get an image on this side of the mirror. So if we go to classify all these images um, here, the, oh, but now here I drew this third ray. There's another ray we could have done down here at the bottom. If you bring a light ray in through the focal point like this, it's going to refract um, parallel to the axis. Um, so that's a third light ray you could do on, on this bottom one. Um, to classify these images, well, this one's upright. It's the same orientation as the original object. And it's virtual, well, a couple reasons. One is we had to trace like the light rays to where they appear to be coming from. The light rays never actually can go behind the mirror. They only appear to be coming from there. Um, so that's a sign that's going to be virtual image. Um, this one's also upright, same orientation as the original object. It's also virtual because, again, it's behind the mirror where the light can't even go. Um, and the same, as a matter of fact, with the next one, upright, same orientation as the original object. It's virtual. Uh, the only case here where you get a real image, and uh, an inverted real image, is this bottom case. And that's where you have the, uh, the object is outside the focal length of a converging mirror. 
Um, just like with lenses, when you had an object outside the focal length of a converging lens, that's when you got, and that was the one case where you got the inverted and real image. Uh, so those are ray diagrams for lenses and mirrors.